By the end of this Excel tutorial, you should expect to know how to take some raw data that looks like this and turn it into a nice, clean, consolidated Excel dashboard that looks like this, where everything is interactive and interconnected and where you can slice and dice the data in any way you want to and the whole dashboard is going to readjust. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm basically going to teach you how to create this Excel dashboard from scratch. The first thing you want to do is to head over to GitHub and download the raw data file we will be using for this tutorial. I'm going to have the link in the description. Additionally, I have uploaded the whole finished dashboard um, as it is in case you do want to download it first and play with it before you start creating your own. Right. Once you do download the raw data, you're going to see a file looking like this. And just to give you a bit of background about our raw data, this is some dummy data I've created myself. And it's basically showing the revenue by account, by month and by product. Also, I have some additional uh, transactional uh, data like some fees here or the future opportunities of the account, the targets per account and also some marketing spend. Additionally, we have some supporting um, columns for the account, which is basically the industry the account is in, the vertical, the segment, the store manager, etc., etc. However, we won't be using all the columns of our data because we want to keep this tutorial short. Right. When building dashboards now, the first thing you want to focus on is your most important KPI. And in our case, the most important KPI is revenue. So we want to create a table that shows the performance of revenue across the months and then if we are hitting the targets or not. So the first thing we want to do is to pivot our data so it's easy for us to manipulate the data. By the way, if you don't know how to use pivot tables, I'm going to have a link in the description where I've created a tutorial about how to pivot data in Excel. The focus of this tutorial is how to build the dashboard and not to be explaining all the Excel functions. Right, so we select the data, we go to insert, we click on pivot tables and when we create the pivot on a new worksheet, we click OK and we have our pivot table. Right, so now we want to start building our pivot table. So remember we said we want to see the revenue across the months. So we drag revenue down to values and then fiscal months um, across uh, columns. Uh, additionally, we want to filter the fiscal year to be fiscal year 21. Um, what we can see now is that the months are not ordered correctly and this is because uh, the months are not a numeric uh, value so Excel cannot recognize what comes first and what comes second. So what we can do, I have this uh, column called uh, month ID, we can drag it on top of columns and it's ordering uh, the months correctly because it's, a, it's an ID, it's a sequence, uh, 103, 104, 105. And additionally, we want to change design of our pivot table. We want to go to design, uh, report layout, uh, show in tabular form. We also want to repeat all items. Actually, we don't need that, but let's have it there. And then we want to remove the subtotals because it adds the subtotal, as you can see, across every month. So we go subtotals. Do not show subtotals. Um, the next thing I want to show now is all the additional transactional data we we'll have per uh, uh, account. So it's going to be things like uh, the registration fee, uh, sorry, the partner fee, the registration fee. As you can see, though, it adds them on the right side of each month, but we don't want to see that. We want to see the field on the left and then the values across the months. So what we can do is that we can drag the values down to the rows. So now you can see we have the revenue and then the months, the partner fee and then the months, and then the registration fee. Uh, as you can see, the data finishes after uh, January. There is no data. That's because um, that January is the latest month. We have actual revenue. Anything after January is going to be the future. So uh, things to come. This is why we have baseline. So if I drag baseline, you can see baseline has zero across the actual months that have revenue. And then it has a number uh, on the future months. Uh, after baseline, we also want to drag the uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, so this is no, actually, this is the number of opportunities. We want to see the future opportunities. So as you can see, again, opportunities are only on future months. So months to come. 
and we also want to drag the uh, future opportunities into run rate. There we go. Uh, so we have all our data now. I'm just going to make them dollars. So go to home and then change this one to be dollars and then remove the decimal places. Right. The next thing we want to do is to add the targets per month. So I go back to my pivot table and drag targets. And, and now we somehow need to create a new field that is the sum of all these uh, transactional data per month and then compare this sum with the tag. So to do this, we have to recreate this data, this pivot data down here, but we have to be taking the data from the pivot table. So when we do have new data, we can just refresh the pivot table and then everything is going to be refreshed. Um, First thing I want to do is to clean a bit. I want to go to view and add the formula bar. Um, also, I want to uh, remove the grid line so it's clean. I want to rename uh, our Excel sheets down here. So this one is actually our row, our pivot row data, and this is our actual row data before we pivot it. Uh, I want to copy these names now and paste them down here, which is where I'm going to be recreating uh, this data set up here. And I want to rename them. So I'm going to give it, give them friendly names as remove the sum of in all of them. Remove this. I'm doing this because I'm going to copy and paste this uh, table at the front end. So we do want uh, friendly names. There we go. I also want to remove the uh, underscores. Underscores. I'm going to rename that in the future. Oops, there we go. Right. I also want to copy and paste the months because we do want to see the months. Or I can just click equals in case we change fiscal year. So I can say equals uh, B5. There we go, we have the fiscal month, and then I drag it across. Uh, one thing I do want to do is I want to put if error here in case we don't have a month showing up and we're going to get an error. So if I put if error, comma, zero, it's not going to be throwing errors around. And then I just drag it down so I can get all the data. So look at this. Straight away, we got all the data. So we've recreated uh, the data we have on the pivot table below. Now we can select all these. Actually, we, we need the targets too. So if I select all of these and drag it down, we're going to get the targets. But the targets, I'm just going to move them a bit further down so I can create a new field, as we said, and name it as totals, just total. And then in this total field, we can sum all the data by month. So there we go, all the revenue by month. So I'm summing them. And I'm dragging everything and then I can select everything and make it dollars. So we know what the numbers we see. There we go. So now we have um, our total and then our target and we can create additional fields further down below, which is going to be the total revenue versus target. But this is going to be the, the, the actual um, difference, the actual dollar difference. Then I can create another field, which is called total versus target, but this time it's going to be the percentage difference. And to do this, I'm just going to say equals. Again, I'm using if error in case I get an error, an error and then it's going to be the total minus the target. Then we close it. Uh, what did I do? Oops, I put underscore instead of parenthesis. Oh, sorry. Comma zero, because I put if error, I forgot about it. Um, and then we drag it all the way across. And then we want to do equals the totals divided by the target. And I want to do minus one because I want the difference after 100%. And I also need the if error in front of it. If error, in case we get an error. Again, if error is very useful. So you avoid all the errors. And then we drag it all the way. And this is going to be the percentage sign. We also want to add two more. I want to show you how to use formal paint there. So if I want to take the format of this cell and apply it on this cell, all I have to do is click on the first cell, click on format paint there, and then select the cells I want to apply the formatting. And then you can see turn them all into dollar uh, values. Right. The next thing we want to do is to apply the same calculations that we've just done on the grand total because 
we, ha we haven't showed the sum for the end of the year. So I can select all these cells and drag them to the right. And um, this one did not work is because it's referencing the wrong cell. I can either copy and paste it or reference the cell. Um, and what we can see now, this is the total revenue across all the months. This is the total partner fee. This is the total registration fee, etc., etc. What we get from the grand total is that we're going to finish the year 5% ahead of our target and we're going to make 13 million extra. Additionally, what we can see from this uh, data is that we're going to be hitting the targets in all months apart from March, which is minus. Uh, but this is something we need to flash at our front end visualizations. And um, the last thing I'm going to do here on this back end row data is that I'm going to go here and select the line style to be total lines and then click on the formula bar to cancel it and then select all the data and click here and click on all borders. So I have all the dotted lines in our table. The next step now is to somehow take this data, this table we've created and put it in our front end visualizations. So first of all, we have to create our front end page. So we go here and uh, we need to rename this as overall performance summary. Did that have been before? Uh, summary uh, and now we need to create our front end on this page where we can link the front end to the back end so everything is interconnected and easily refreshable. By the way, if you feel that you're getting enough value out of this video, please click that like button and subscribe to my channel. Right, the first thing you should do when you're creating your front end visualizations, the dashboard, is basically to create the titles uh, section. So we head over into view and we remove the grid lines because we don't want to see the grid lines. And then usually I select the first five uh, rows uh, to create my titles section and I leave column A empty. I also leave some space on the right in case people that are going to be using this report are using it from a smaller monitor or their laptop screen. So it's not going to fit and they're going to have to keep scrolling on the right, which is not nice. And um, right, so I select my area and then I go to home and I give it a, a light blue color so it's easy for the, the eye. And then I want to select all my columns and make them a bit larger, uh, wider, sorry. I think this is fine. I still have some extra space here in case pe uh, people have smaller uh, screens. Uh, and then usually on the left is where I put the date. In the middle, I put the title and on the right side, the logo of the company I work for. To add the date now, I'm simply going to select this area here and merge it together. And I can either manually say what week it is or we, what, um, what date it is, or I can create a formula uh, that picks always picks the current week based on the date today. So I can say equals week, um, and then use end, and this, this is a formula which is week num. Then I get, today, I get today's date. And then comma 21 is the whole week, so every Monday, and then I close it. So we can see we, got, we generated week 38 from the formula. And I want to put it up high. I want to make it uh, bold, and I want to give it the bluey. And I want to make it larger so it fits. Right, now we're going to add the title. So I'm basically going to select the, this area over here. I'm going to merge it, and the title is going to be FY21 overall uh, performance. Summary, and again, I want it in the middle, blue, bold, make it larger. And then here on the right side is where we add the logo. For your logo, you can use any logo you want, but for my case, I'm just gonna use my YouTube channel's logo. So I go to insert, I go to uh, pictures, I select the logo I want, and then I just put it on the corner. There we go, right. So next, we want to add a border around our title. So we go here where it says border, line style, I select all the lines, and then I just add the other lines around my titles section. After finishing with our title section, we want to leave some empty space down here where we're going to add our summary graph and our slices over here. However, because we don't have any data to test the slices or the graph, we're going to leave this space empty for now, and we're going to come back to it later. So let's create the uh, section one. So just to have title. So I'm going to merge this area, give it blue background, and I'm going to leave this area here empty, as we said. And here is where I'm going to create section two. 
so i'm going to merge it then give it a name which is going to be the revenue performance performance summary table month on month uh, i want to make this blue bold in the middle and a bit larger and here now oh let me add the border same with this one and here now is where we're going to add the table we've created uh, on the row data here on the pivot row data right we start by going to pivot row data and copying the column names which is the friendly names we've created before and then we paste them down here now we want to connect the front end with the back end so we simply say equals we leave an empty space because we're going to merge these two actually that's why i went to the column after and we say equals b16 and i click enter and as i can see it references the cell over here i also want to add if error uh, in case we don't have any data uh, and i'm going to put an empty space there uh, now i just drag the whole data to the end and i just drag it down and i should have all the data straight away uh, I want to make this as dollars. I also want to click this uh, wrap text over here because you can see some months don't fit. Um, and there we go. So it expanded the row, but it works for us. We want to center this in the middle and at the top. We want to merge these cells. So we select the merge. We want to align it to the uh, left. We want to format this and do the same for everything else. And then we want to merge these two and now we want to add the dotted lines around them so dotted lines and this is a percentage so i'm just fixing the table uh, then two decimal places now this row i want to select everything and delete the formulas as it's an empty row and i want to merge it and give it this uh, light white background as five percent dark i want to do the same with this row as it has no data in so i merge it then I give it the same background. Right, so you've seen how easy now we've managed to bring the backend data to the front end uh, dashboard. The idea is that when new data comes in the database, this um, pivot table is connected with the database and then this pivot table fits this uh, table down here and this table down here fits the front end, right. So what we have to do next is that we want to flush out now, we want to create some conditional formatting uh, of the months that are performing well and the months that are not performing that well. So what we can do is that we can select the data and then go to conditional formatting and do the color scale. So first thing, if I hover over it, we can see straight away that March is red, it's not performing well. And then June is the best, which is uh, June and December actually are the darkest greens, so they are performing the best. Um, however, I'm going to add uh, manual. I don't, I, I don't really like this color scaling. I think there is too much colors. I want to make a manual rule, which is, say, which is basically going to be if the cell is greater than 0%, then I want to give it a, a fill with dark green. I, keep, I click OK. And then another rule on top of it, if it's less than 0%, I want it to be red. So there we go, easily visualizing what's red and what's green. Uh, for the percentage, I want to do data bars. So again, I select the data, I go to conditional formatting and I do the data bars and I want the uh, green and the red, I prefer this one. So again, straight away, we can visualize that March is the month we, who's not doing well. And then the company now can investigate straight away why is March not hitting, is not going to hit the targets because remember March is in the future. Maybe we have to increase the pipeline uh, or the future opportunities or the baseline. So we give the company data to work with. Right, this is it for part one. I'm gonna finish the whole dashboard in the next video, which is gonna be posted in three days. So if you feel like you've gained enough value out of this video, please click that like button and subscribe to my channel and enable notifications so you know when the next video is going to be available. Thank you very much for watching.